lecture we've been talking about uh, space H1. Today we will talk about its subspace H10. I will be putting zero on top. Uh, there is another popular notation when uh, zero is put just here in the bottom. Okay, so let's recall what was the definition of the space H1. So we were saying that uh, function u belongs to the space H1 um, on domain o omega, and we uh, will be assuming everywhere uh, that uh, omega is a bounded domain in Rn. So u is in H1. It means that u is uh, in L2 and exists first order weak partial derivatives and they also belong to the space uh, L2. And uh, H1, we have shown that H1 is a Hilbert space. Uh, so here is the inner product and here is the norm uh, in H1. And so now how we can define space H10? Uh, we can take um, functions from the space uh, of um, infinitely differentiable function with compact support, support and take closure in the norm of H1. So we can, uh, in other words, we can write it as u belongs, function u belongs to the space h10 that means that exists a, a sequence of functions um each of them is in the space of infinitely differential differentiable functions with compact support such that the norm in h1 of the difference u minus um uh, approaches zero as m goes to infinity so uh, we can say that roughly speaking uh, functions from H10, they are functions from H1 that uh, vanish in some solid sense, vanish on the boundary. And we will uh, talk about this meaning uh, in the next uh, lecture. But so, so from here, from these, these definitions, we can write the following. Right? Obviously, the uh, functions uh, from uh, c infinity zero they all in h10 right because of the definition we just add something and so according to the definition the first definition h1 the function from l2 with some extra conditions and if we are taking uh, if we are thinking about this then we know h1 is complete if we take and those functions also will be in H1. So if we take the closure, they also uh, will have that also that H10 is a subspace of H1. So since H10 is a subspace of H1, uh, we can use uh, the same inner product and uh, the same norm. Uh, however, due to Friedrich's inequality, uh, which we will uh, discuss in, in a minute, uh, we can have a shorter version of norm and the uh, inner product, right? So we can remove this term and keep only the second term. And uh, also we can make a remark uh, that um, in a similar fashion, we can introduce spaces uh, WPL0. Uh, right, so so uh, we mentioned once the definition of the space WPL, right? We say that U belongs to WPL if U is from NP and exists weak derivatives uh, up to the order L uh, that also belongs to LP and here L is all um, non-negative e integers and uh, here is the standard norm in uh, WPL oh there are some equivalent uh, norms but that's 
what you can use and I wrote here U to the power P so I didn't write here to the power 1 over P and oh, okay so, so uh, in a similar fashion as I mentioned we can introduce W P A 0 that would be a closure of function uh, from C infinity 0 of a functions infinity differentiable function with compact support in closure in the norm of WPL and uh, here is also another and here everywhere I assume that P is uh, between so equals to one but less than infinity and here's a different notations for uh, this function uh, functions with zero from the space with zero sometimes people write L, P and zero in the bottom you can see these notations in the books and for the same reason as we wrote this line we can write uh, this line and uh, in general uh, we can say as I, as I mentioned that um, we we're talking about functions with zeros in some space of uh, in some sense of function from the same space say w p l when that are vanish or on the boundary so in in general they uh, if we take here omega right and in general they do not coincide these two spaces and uh one of the explanations that uh, we will see for the case uh, of H10, it will be easily seen using Friedrich's inequality. So Friedrich's inequality for the space uh, H10. So if we have a function u from that space H10, then uh, we can uh, evaluate uh, its norm uh, L2 norm in terms of its uh, L2 norm of its gradient and here constant C it depends only on the domain omega and uh, I would like to stress that this inequality holds only for H1 zeros for the space H1 it uh, will not be true Okay, so let's look at the proof of this and this is Friedrich's inequality of Friedrich's inequality and um, we will prove it in two steps. So in the first step we assume that we are dealing with smooth functions. So we assume that u is from uh, c zero infinity. So u is not from h10 but it's an uh, infinitely differentiable function with compact support and then um, what we will do uh, we can uh, take some uh, bigger uh, domain we can take a ball or we can take say a cube or a parallel pipe that uh, contain our domain omega and then we will continue our function u as zero outside since u is from um, is a function with compact support in omega so we can continue this function outside omega into our parallel pipette as a zero function and so we call this parallel pipette p a and its description uh, and then uh, we it will have uh, an edges and we will uh, take a minimum and assume that this minimum uh, from the edges would be uh, a1 uh, and so then uh, since we are dealing with smooth functions, we can use uh, Newton Leibniz formula, fundamental theorem of calculus. We can write u at the point x1, and here we have 
x hat includes all x's from x2 to xn. And so, so we can write this uh, or formula uh, known and then what we are going to do uh, we will square both sides right so because our goal is to end up with this inequality uh, first for these smooth functions so if we square both parts and then use uh, cauchy bunikowski schwarz inequality I just wrote uh, it's here reminding you and uh, so here in this inequality we have a product of two functions f and g and here we assume that we have one times uh, this derivative so we can uh, write it as two integrals and then uh, so here we have integral from negative a1 to x1 so if we integrate to a1 um, first we can write less or equal then from this integral we will have 2a1 and the second we just uh, copy so and now we have this inequality so left hand side right hand side and then we integrate uh, both parts over omega so in the left we will get integral of this and since our function continued to our parallel pipe as a zero uh, then instead of integral over omega we can write integral over this parallel pipe pa and then here we also integrate over this parallel pipe so i wrote it uh, so this was our left hand side that we that we had and this is integral of a parallel pipe but i split it into two integral along of this the shortest edge times integral along all other uh, directions uh, so um, and then what we have so from here left hand side will give us l2 norm of function u and in the right hand side so we can uh, see that uh, nothing depends on x1 so we can rewrite it as iterated integral so from here from the first one we will get another 2a1 so we will have 4a1 square and then this the rest would be integral um, or parallel pipe it or the same as integral over domain omega and uh, then from here if instead of just uh, derivative with respect to one variable we will take um, derivatives with res uh, we will take the um, grad gradient uh, we will see that um, absolute value of the gradient is even bigger so then we can rewrite it uh, in this form and that what we were trying to uh, reach this this is l2 norm of the gradient of function u so if we look at the left hand side and in the right hand side that's uh, exactly what we wanted uh, to to prove and this is our constant that depends uh, on domain omega uh, of course it's possible in some cases to think of how to get the best constant but i i was just trying to find any constant so we uh, uh, we have our inequality but this was only the first part of the proof because we proved it only for functions uh, infinitely differentiable functions so now the second step so now if u is from uh, the space h10 then according to definition of this space we know that 
it is the sequence of functions uk from uh, this space c0 infinity such that uh, um, uk converges to u in h1 norm so uh, here i just wrote since we know that we can write it for um, smooth function from c0 infinity so here i wrote it for uk and then we can take a limit when k approaches infinity then here we'll have function uh, from h10 and the same in the right hand side so we can get this um, prefix inequality for functions from h10 so let's make a couple of remarks uh, uh, regarding prefix inequality so i use it here we just proved it so uh first thing that uh, we can see from this prefix inequality is that our space h10 our subspace of h1 uh, does not coincide with the entire h1 right uh, for instance we can take any non-zero constants say one and this non-zero const constants uh, is in h1 but as we can see uh, from the prefix inequality that uh, it does not uh, belong to the space h10 so this is first comment and uh, the second remark that we can make that uh, when we uh, are dealing with functions u from h10 we can use a short expression for uh, the norm and the inner product we mentioned that we still can use uh, the norm uh, and the inner product that we had in h1 but now uh, due to this inequality we can use a shorter version uh, for the norm and so and um, for the inner product as well so let's um, prove this small uh, statement that uh, the longer version of the norm and the shorter version function from h10 are equivalent right so so we're proving that this sh shorter norm right which uh, and this longer norm are equivalent so what do we need to show we need to show that uh, uh, exist two um, positive constants uh, such that for every function u from h1 zero we have uh, this double inequality so here i put this zero norm in the middle right but it, it doesn't really matter which one we can put in the middle as long as we are able to find c1 and c2 indeed so here i made a comment that suppose we put say zero norm in the middle and one norms on the sides then uh, we can rewrite this inequality uh, putting uh, u1 in the middle so if indeed if we look at this side c1 u1 less or equal than uh, u or here u1 is outside Uh, then from here it follows, follows that uh, one norm is less or, or equal than one over c1 uh, times zero norm and from the other uh, inequality we we have that zero norm less or equal less or equal than c2 times one norm from here one norm is greater or equal than one over c2 zero norm and if we combine these uh, two we will see that we can put one norm in the middle so this was this um, small comment so now let's uh, use uh, this inequality and find c1 and c2 so one way uh, we can say that if we take this zero norm oh, well let's square it right uh, and then 
add something, add A2 norm or function U, right? Th that, then it will make our expression uh, only big, right? It could make um, bigger or equal, greater or equal. Then from here, we know that this zero norm is just a gradient uh, in A2 norm and plus the other term and the sum will give us H1 norm of, of function u squared. Right? So from here we can see that we found one constant C2 and it will be one. So, uh, and the other way. So if we uh, write h1 norm then uh, according to what how this norm is defined it will be a2 norm of function u squared plus a gradient um, uh, u a2 norm of a squared right and here we have a square and um, so from this um, the the first one right we know that when we are in h10 according to physics inequality uh, the first term would be less or equal than c times uh, the norm of a2 norm of the gradient plus norm of the gradient so we will have c plus one uh, and and that would be our uh, h10 norm so from here if we look at the beginning and the end we can see that c squared c1 squared is um would be this number so we are able to find both uh positive constant so now this finishes the proof that the norms are indeed equivalent uh, let's finish uh, this lecture with the uh, integration by parts formula so if u is from h1 and v is from h1 uh, 0 then we can write this uh, integration by parts formula that you probably believe is true but since we are dealing with non-smooth function uh, let's uh, go th through the proof right so we said that v is from h1 0 it means that according to the definition uh, exists such a sequence of, of functions at vm uh, in the space of infinitely differ differentiable functions with com convert support such that uh, in the h1 norm uh, this difference goes to zero as m uh, goes to infinity and by just rewriting the definition of h1 norm squared uh, it will be L2 norm of difference of these two functions plus L2 norm of the gradient of the difference. So here I just um, wrote the integral expressions for those. And if we know that this goes to zero and we have sum of two non negative numbers, then each goes to zero. So from here we can write that the difference in uh, L2 norm of the difference goes to zero and L2 norm of uh, the difference of the partial derivative since here we have um, magnitude of the gradient and it consists of uh, this expression squared for every uh, j from 1 to n then each of them must go to zero. So we have have this preparation so what about about function u function u is from uh, h1 and it means that uh, for this function exist weak partial derivatives and we can write this formula for any um, test function phi from c infinitely differentiable function <laughs> with compact support so now let's set phi uh, as a vm so instead of phi in this formula we put vm so we will have this expression and now we know that this is from l2 right and this is from l2 so then we can take a, a limit when m goes to infinity 
and if you are wondering uh, why we can take limit under the integral then just recall Hashibunikovsky Schwarz inequality that we mentioned today and you will see that uh, we can do this procedure so after taking the limit we will end up with the integration by parts formula that we wanted to show and now a small generalization oh, not, not small just a generalization uh, of integration by parts formula so if we have u from w p l one p greater than one and v from w q l zero and one over p plus one over q equals uh, one then we can also uh, have this integration by parts formula for uh, any uh, order of alpha less or equal than n so in our case well, that we have shown we remember that p equals 2 so both p and q equals 2 thank you